Welcome to another episode of GoTo Unscripted. We're here in the lovely uh, Amsterdam as part of the GoTo Conference series. I'm talking to Sien Simonsen, who is part of Race for Oceans. Sien, welcome to GoTo Unscripted. Thank you so much. Pleasure. So you've had an interesting uh, journey in life, bringing, it seems to be, a number of passions together. So you, an adventure person, I do a little bit of running in my time, but it doesn't seem to be anything that you've done. Tell us about your, seems like, amazing marathons all over the world in every possible place. Yeah, so the whole thing about Race for Ocean started back when I was uh, deployed to Iraq. Uh, I worked as in the, in the Danish army and was deployed as a captain. Um, and I work with rebuilding projects and uh, so that means that most of the time I was out in the society and I just saw how the amount of plastic and trash just increased in the lakes and rivers. Uh, and it was also that time where you could take three, mo three weeks away from, from, from the, the area and then I went to Thailand for diving and I had nine dives there and all nine dives I saw plastic under the surface. But at that time, that was in 2005, there wasn't the same awareness about the ocean and how our footprint um, is destroying the ocean. So that's what the fundament of Race for Oceans actually started. And then I went on quite an adventure, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So uh, being an adventure person, I know you know very much involved in swimming and diving and, and uh, things like that. I mean, obviously we all love the oceans and you just have this awareness that little bits of plastic were appearing on the ocean and then appearing uh, on, on the beach. Yeah. And you've sort of been tracing back how those plastic products are created and how they land up on the beach because people think, uh, I know we've got, uh, you know, the plastic uh, cups and mugs and things that we use and maybe they, they fall off and land on a beach, but you're actually talking about the um, original bits of plastic that are created as part of the industrial process. So yeah, can you just walk through, walk us through where plastic comes from and how it lands up on the beach? Yeah, so the thing that we have decided to focus on now is actually what we call plastic pellets. So this is uh, the raw material to create any given plastic product. So these are made then in a factory as a raw material that yeah, then go out to things. Exactly. Okay. So this has never been a product before. Okay. It simply, it, it, it didn't become a success because we lost it before it went okay. into a product. So, so are these recycled plastic or is it just made plastic from petrochemicals? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is a combination of oil, gas and a little bit of chemistry depending mm. on what kind of uh, plastic type that we want to create. Um, and we have just seen them over and over again in our activities along the coastline, not only in Denmark, but also out in, in the world. And for me as a person, also because I have a background from the military, it's just, we won't succeed with this one, with the two finger system, going out to pick one pellet at a time. So how can we utilize technology? But how do, you, how do even the plastic pieces land up on the, on the beach? Because they're made in a factory, you would think it would be... Yeah fairly, I wouldn't say secure, but fairly sort of, you're not going to just lose plastic or yeah, does that happen? Exactly. So we have a production site here and then we have another production site here. And here we produce the plastic pellets, the raw material. And then we want to transport it over to this fabric site where they produce the plastic products. Because okay, that's the raw material and then it needs to be made into something in exactly. a separate factory. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So on this production site and then in the transport phase. So if you have like a container ship that loses a container, which contains <laughs> plastic pellets, mm -hmm. uh, then it can go out to, uh, to nature in that way. And then also over at this production site where you want to create the plastic products. So that's like the three places where you can lose the plastic pellets and then it will go out in So it's just literally being lost, you know, it's in a bag and the bag has a it breaks or a container, you know, falls yeah. off a ship or something. Yeah. For many years, this has been standard procedure to handle um, or mishandle uh, the, the plastic pellets in this way. Uh, and what we have experienced is when we ask our participants in our activities, then we can see that 98% of our participants, they don't know what plastic pellets are and they don't know why it ends up in nature. And we think that's a huge problem because it's difficult for people to understand this challenge. Um, because how can you do something about something you cannot see, right? So we have taken this into our domain now and trying to find a solution 
because we know it's out there and we actually also know how to stop it. Regulations and it will come. Yeah. And more awareness. But there's a whole lot of plastic lying on the beach. Exactly. And even interestingly, just looking at the color, yeah. you can imagine there's a lot of that lying on the beach that people don't necessarily know it's plastic. Mm. If you've got very fine sand, maybe you would understand, but otherwise yeah. you would just think it's parts of some rocks or sand or some loose kind of things. Exactly. And that's also some of the stories that we hear from our participants because we heard one which is a man who, who meets us at Bolhon. It's a small island in Denmark and uh, on the beach there. And he says, but what are you picking up? And we showed him a handful of plastic pellets. And he was like, oh, that's the sand pearls. My kids were playing with those, uh, collecting those 40 years ago. Wow. Not anymore. So we are standing on the same beach and this has been, you know, like ongoing things for 40 years, right? Um, and then we have also stories going back 60 years ago from uh, an old man who had retired, that was last year, he also came and, and, and asked us, what are you guys doing? And we were showing him the hand with plastic pellets and he was like, oh my God, those small fuckers, I know those. Because he used to work on one of the big container ships back in the 60s. So he had seen with his own eyes how it was handled or mishandled at that time. And he said it was, you know, it was sailing on deck, literally. So obviously there's a huge amount of plastic that is in the ocean, is on the beaches, that people are recognizing it. And in the future, regulation may or may not stop it. But yeah, tell us about the technology that uh, you developed to sort out the problem we, we have today. Yeah, exactly. Because I have gone, been on the, on the beaches for many hours and the place I think the best, that's actually when I can hear the ocean in, in one year, best in two years. Um, but it is to see how can we take AI and then create synergy to robots and drones. Because the AI can help us with identifying what is going to be picked up. And uh, the drone can help us with identify what kind of areas that needs to be cleaned up because we want to, to leave the lightest footprint as possible on biodiversity. And that, that is the drone's task. And then the rover or robots will be used for picking up okay. what's not going to, uh, to lie on in so nature. You, so you literally have a, a drone that flies around and sort of maps terrain and finds places where there is beach or maybe uh, um, plastic. You could see hotspots. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> find yeah. hotspots, <clears throat> find out what is you know important places to go to. And then you literally have a, a robot that walks, crawls, moves uh, across the beach and picks up the individual pellets using an AI model to recognize the difference between a plastic pellet and a piece of and some sand. Yeah, that's wow. true. Wow, is that? That's, uh, that's our mission. Wow. Yeah, so that's, that's what we are aiming for. Um, and that's due to my background from the, from the military where I've seen what technology can help people with. Um, especially the soldiers to keep their security. But, um, but, but I just see such a huge potential in combining those three technologies uh, and take the best out of it to create a whole solution, which is will benefit you know the whole society. Because I don't think it, this spill has been going on for the last plus 60 years. And uh, I'm not saying that we will have clean beaches in 10 years. I think that this is something that we are going to handle for the next plus 60 years. Mm -hmm. So this means that it will be my children, grandchildren who will stand with this challenge. So this is also to show um, some light, right? Because this, this, um, this challenge is just, you know, so huge. It's yeah. not something that one person can, can, but together we can do much more and we can also succeed. That is what I, I choose to okay. believe in. So, I mean, we, people have seen a demo of how the, the robot works and pick, picks it up. What are the sort of next steps? Is it you know, scaling it out and having more robots and deploying them? I mean, that also sounds like a sort of military maneuver to be able to handle that. So yeah, what are, the, what are the future plans? Yeah, so the future plans is, there's like five steps. And the first step was to collect image data to create the AI model. We've done that one last year. And then was it to develop an AI rover? Check mark on that one as well. And the third phase is where we're standing now, is to find the AI model for the drone and the mapping system. And then it is to look for learning programs because we want, when we do the scale out, we also want to do awareness programs that 
supports the, the whole solution. And then the last thing that would be um, um, do citizen programs, citizen science programs, where people all over the world can be integrated in this solution by going out and take small video sequences of the plastic pellets and microplastic lying, upload it via web app, and for that way have the being able to train the AI model and have the feeling that this is something that I actually can contribute with. Well, wow. and I mean, do you need, uh, if people want to get involved or want to help or want to find out more about it, yeah. what, how can people get engaged with this? Yeah, so there's, a, there's more steps depending on how much time you have. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, follow along on the social media. So like Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, connect with me on, uh, on LinkedIn. If you see a good solution somewhere in the world, if you have a good idea, if you have a question that can, um, that can challenge the idea, feel free to, to put it in, in, in the hole. And then we can, you know, together uh, create the best solution for, for this, uh, this challenge. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. I think it's, it's fascinating to bring your military background and organization and to, you know, make a dent in our huge environmental issues using technology. Bringing them all together sounds fascinating. So yeah. thanks very much for joining us on yeah. Goat Unscripted. Thank you so much for the invite.